Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the probability of sample means with class calc. The probability of sample means differs from just a single value because you're looking for the average of the sample be meeting the criteria. So instead of just one person meeting the criteria, you're looking for the sample mean to meet the criteria. This is a very simple process with class calc, and the thing that I really love about class calc is the fact that it gives you a visual representation of the area that you're finding, so it helps you to visualize what you're actually looking for. So what we have here is the mean starting salary for a data analyst is $55,275. dollars A random sample of size 40 <clears throat> is drawn from the population. Find the following probabilities. Assume that sigma is $7,000. Okay, so with this, if you were doing hand calculations, we're using the sampling distribution of the sample means, which tells us that the mean of the sample means, so the average of all of the sample averages for that population, is equal to the mean of the original population. So since this is the mean of the original population, we would just use that value for our mean of our sampling distribution of our sample means. The standard deviation of the sample means is equal to the standard deviation of the original population, the 7,000, divided by the square root of the sample size. So we would divide that by the square root of 40, and that would be our standard deviation or standard error of our sampling distribution of the sample means. If you were doing hand calculations and wanted to use a table, you would have to use the z-score formula in order to convert this information into z-scores. Then you can look up your probabilities using the z-table. I do have a video that shows you how to find the probabilities using a table, but Again, it's not as accurate or precise, and it's a lot more work, so this is only needed for using hand calculations. All right, so with this, we are dealing with the normal distribution. So we're going to have a distribution that is set up where it's going to be centered at the mean, so the mean is 55,275. And then my standard deviation, and so basically to go to the right, I would add this, and to the left, I would subtract it. I would take the 7,000 divided by the square root of 40. So that's what we would be counting by on the base. The nice thing is with using class calc, I can just plug this in as my mean and this as my standard deviation, exactly as it is, and then we're gonna use CDF. So the first one, we're looking for the probability that the sample mean is less than $52,000. So 52,000 is gonna be down here, so we're looking for a value down here that is less than that. So we would start at negative infinity and we would stop shading at 52,000. So anything less than that. So let me grab the calculator. This is classcalc.com um, backslash, backslash graphing calculator uh, is the URL. And there is a free download for your smartphone. It looks very similar. So you can also use this in your smartphone. So I'm going to hit stat and I'm going to go to distribution plots and I'm going to choose the normal distribution. In here, the normal distribution, it's gonna ask us for the mean and the standard deviation. So remember that our mean was 55,275, and our standard deviation was the 7,000 divided by the square root. So you can either type SQRT to get the square root, or you can come down here and just select the square root of the sample size. So remember that we were using a sample size of 40. So on here, if I hit the little icon, it will give us um, the curve. It'll show us the curve as it is. And then if I select CDF, right now it has the entire thing shaded because we're going from negative infinity up to positive infinity. So with this, we want from negative infinity until we get to $52,000. 
And if you notice, we can see that it's shaded just slightly down here. We don't have very much shaded down here. So the probability of this happening is 0 0.0015. So the probability that our sample mean is less than 52,000 is approximately 0 0.0015. Typically with probabilities, we round to four decimal places, but always look at your homework platform or read the directions to see what they want you to round it to. All right, when you're looking at probabilities, they may ask you, is this usual or unusual? So this would be considered unusual for the sample mean to occur to be less than um, 52,000. Uh, the threshold that is by default used um, is the probability is less than 5% or 0 0.05. So the default threshold for being unusual is 0 0.05. And this is important when you get into hypothesis tests later, understanding this concept, because when you do get into hypothesis test at the end of a stats class, you will have to compare these probability values to a given threshold. And so 5%, this kind of thinking is just helpful for building up, finding um, whether things appear unusual or not in hypothesis testing. So let's look at two more really quickly. Um, the second one that we're going to find is we're gonna look for the probability that our sample mean is greater than 54,000 but less than 57,000. So I really like class calc for these because they make it super simple to plug it in because all you have to do is start with your threshold. So I started shading at 54,000 and I'm gonna stop shading at 57,000. So we can see what has been shaded in here and we can see that it's approximately 0.815, and then I would round this up to eight since the value afterwards is greater than five. So this is very likely to happen. Um, so this is 0.8158. So this occurs 81.58% of the time. So this is incredibly typical. Um, it's very likely for the average of the samples to be between 54,000 and 57,000. And then the last one that we're going to look at is what is the probability that the sample mean is greater than $57,000? Okay, so this time we're starting to shade at 57,000 and we're gonna keep going until positive infinity. So if I clear this out, I would do 57,000 would be my starting point. And then I don't have to put anything in here because it automatically populates it with positive infinity. And so we would end up with approximately 0 0.0596. This is almost unusual, but it's still greater than the 5%. So we wouldn't consider this one unusual but it is right on that threshold of being unusual. So if your threshold changed to like 10%, then this may be considered unusual. But right now, because our threshold by default is 5%, we're going to go ahead and say that this is a typical value. So it's likely to happen that the mean would be greater than 57,000. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.